the British Isles, the continent with a series of unfortunate events. After being invaded by the Romans, largely impacting the landscape of the language within the continent, the British Isles were once again attacked in 1066 by William of Normandy or William the Conqueror. The Norman invasion resulted in the displacement of English as the primary language there as the people were obliged to speak French. Now, the conquest of the Normans affected the previous Old English language, causing changes in grammatical systems, vocabularies, and pronunciations, making the English language transformed into the more comprehensible Middle English, with the example like this excerpt from Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. Who is Geoffrey Chaucer, you ask? Don't worry, we will address that question soon, but before that, to make things easier, know that the period of Middle English can be categorized into the periods of the 12th century until the 15th century. Okay, so let's take a look at the state of English literature during the 12th century. What do we have during this time? We have Omelum or Omelum, a biblical exegesis which is the interpretation of the Bible. The work was written by a monk named Om or Omen, as stated in the work itself, in the form of early Middle English verse. This particular work helps in tracing the development of the English language since the period of the Norman conquest, so it is quite an important work. Other than that, the work also utilized a poetic meter, which basically means stress patterns of a beat in poems, making it one of the first Middle English poems to have such a format. There is also a poem known as the Owl and the Nightingale. As the name suggests, it is a story about an owl and a nightingale. The two creatures have arguments about various things in a courtly style and this work remains one of the most well-known literary debates despite of the author's anonymity due to its allegorical and even satirical nature of human life. Moving on to the 13th century, one of the surviving works of this time is Brut written by Lyman, an English priest. Brut is a historiography about Britain in the form of a poem based on the work by Oasis Roman de Brut in French. Waste based his work on Historia Regum Britanniae by Geoffrey of Monmouth. Geoffrey wrote the work in Latin and claimed to have translated the work from a British ancient language, although the claim is adopted by the majority. And his history of Britain is highly inaccurate when compared with the real thing. Nevertheless, his work is one of the earliest tales of King Lear and his three daughters. Geoffrey also popularized the famous King Arthur. For those who don't know King Arthur, have you ever heard of the sword Excalibur? It was one of King Arthur's possessions. So in this era, for Lyamon's Brut, the English literature was seemingly revived. His work was King Arthur's first appearance in the form of the English language. Still, the introduction and the massive influence of the tale were due to the French influence, or French literature to be more specific. Chrétien de Troyes, a 12th century French poet, wrote Arthurian tales which largely impacted the spread of the romance genre during this time. And by romance, we do not mean a love story between a sparkling vampire and a fragile girl, or a cheesy love story between a manly man and a cute lady. Romance here is the tale of knights, their heroic adventures, battles in the name of courtly love and cavalry. Other English romance works of this period include King Horn and Havelock the Dane, in which the authors of both works are unknown or anonymous. Now, moving on to the 14th century. Following the romance genre trend, this was the period for the emergence of a classic tale, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. But we will not be analyzing about the iconic work here in order not to stray too far from the topic at hand. Sir Gawain and the Green Knight is one of the examples of a poem using alliteration, the repeated sounds of consonants in a series of words. Although the author of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight has never been truly known, it is often inferred that the author was the same author of a poem titled The Peril, Cleanness, and Patience, poems whose author is also anonymous. These poems were part of the time during Middle English called the Alliterative Revival, in which there was a resurgence of poetry utilizing alliterations. Another famous work during this time was Pierce Plowman, an alliterative allegorical poem written by William Langland. It is a poem about a man and the narrator with the name Will and his dream visions. It is considered as a satire to the religious beliefs and religion corruptions during the time, largely influencing the spiritual level of the society to the extent that it was read as a reformist Protestant text in the 16th century. Now, speaking of spiritual stuff, there is an increase of spiritual writings in the 14th century, but let's take a break. Created using Powtoon.